Now you've probably all heard the term non-reference card or reference card at some point in time, but you might not be 100% sure what that means. A reference card is Nvidia or AMD's design in terms of the layout of the card and the configuration and the cooling. A non-reference design has been changed in some way by the actual manufacturer, such as Gigabyte, Asus, or MSI. That could mean a cooling change, that could mean a configuration change, such as more GPU memory, or it could mean in the case of the cards you see here in front of you, all of which have been completely redesigned in terms of the PCB layout and the cooling. But what's the benefit of a non-reference card? Wouldn't you want the design made by Nvidia? The answer is not always. So these GTX 770s in front of me all have some unique features that make them different. But in general, the benefits of a reference card are they can use higher quality components, things like more power phases or beefier power connectors for the cards themselves. They can have a more pleasing aesthetic than a reference card. They can also have much better cooling potential than a reference card. And with the higher quality componentry and better cooling, often comes better overclocking potential than a reference card, particularly on cards that feature GPU Boost 2.0 because the clock speed the card actually runs at is not always completely dependent on the clock speed it's set to, but can also be dependent on the cooling. Last but not least, because these cards are more overclockable, they will often come with higher than reference clock speeds right out of the box before you even do any of your own overclocking. So we're gonna start with what's special about the GTX 770 Lightning from MSI. It has pretty much all of the features that we've seen from them, including dual 10 centimeter dust proof propeller fans, so they're optimized for optimal airflow and they spin backwards on startup to keep dust from gunking up your cooler. It also has their GPU reactor technology on the back, which allows more current to be delivered to the GPU itself. It uses two eight pin PCI Express connectors for more beefy power delivery as well as a super pipe heat pipe that is a thicker style of heat pipe. It has a back plate on the back of the card which allows for a slightly better cooling of some of the componentry on the back and features their military class three concept of more robust components allowing for better power delivery and better clock speeds. It does come pre overclocked and supports triple over voltage which means you can overvolt not only the GPU but also the memory and the VTT of the GPU itself as well as temperature monitoring for not just the GPU but also other important components on the card through MSI Afterburner, which is their overclocking utility. Next up is the GeForce GTX 770 Direct CU2 OC from ASUS. This uses, as you may or may not have figured it out at this point, their Direct CU2 concept of coolers, large heat pipes, direct contact between the heat pipes and the GPU itself. It also has their SAP or Super Alloy Power concept where they use high quality componentry in the VRM and it has their DigiPlus VRM which amounts to more stability in the power for to the GPU itself. It has a backplate as well well, just like the GTX 770 Lightning from MSI. And a cool feature of this one right here is it supports their VGA Hotwire feature, which on certain ASUS motherboards allows you to overvolt this video card past the specification limits imposed by NVIDIA. Next up, we have the Gigabyte Windforce GTX 770. This is the highest clocked out of the box, out of the three cards we have here today, and it uses three fans on their Windforce cooler, which is has six copper heat pipes and is designed to dissipate up to 450 watts of heat. This particular card does not have a backplate. However, you can clearly see that it has a fully custom PCB, just like the other two, and what Gigabyte's done in order to achieve those higher clock speeds is make sure that the components being used are of the highest quality as well, although they don't have a specific branding such as SAP or military class for what they're using on this board. So stay tuned, we're gonna talk cooling results. Now, before we get into the cooling results, I wanna go through the clock speeds of these cards. So the ASUS DirectCU2 is clocked at 1.111 gigahertz, whereas the MSI Lightning is at 1.150 gigahertz and the Gigabyte Windforce is at 1.189 gigahertz. This matters because these higher stock clock speeds for certain cards may have had an effect on the cooling results, which we will see next. All three cards are clocked at seven gigahertz on the memory by default. So you can see here, we get anywhere from around 
12 to 17 degrees better than a reference GTX 770 in terms of temperatures with a spread of around 5 degrees from the DirectCU 2 being the strongest performer in terms of being cool running and the Gigabyte WinForce being the weakest performer but Bear in mind, guys, the wind force is clocked significantly higher than the DirectCU 2, with the MSI being in the middle and the ASUS being lowest. So that should give you some idea that all of these cards are, well, very effectively cooled, very awesome cards, and quite frankly, any of the ones in front of me would be a fantastic choice for a GTX 770. Thank you for checking out this video, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.